Hello, Nikoshin here. What you can see behind me is my modular house project. It has been some time since I last mentioned it, so let's do a little recap. When I built a house in the past, I often wanted some redstone-oriented additions, which more often than not did not fit. So this time I instead built the redstone contraptions and farms first. Then I built a room with deco and interior around it, and if I have multiple rooms next to each other, I then add a facade, which in theory lead to a finished house. The things around the house I did until now mostly happened off camera, since I deemed them as not interesting enough to show, so let's quickly go over them now. First of all, there is my automatic potion brewer. It brews potions until A. The potion chest is full. B. It goes out of water bottles. Or C. There are no nether warts left. And when one of these conditions apply, it shuts itself down. Honestly, I don't know if it could break if I wouldn't shut it down automatically, but I also don't want to try. Another design principle of mine is to have a variety of ways to choose for the same destination. I think you might see what I mean with that. And this here is a good example for a farm that is quite tiny and yeah, it didn't get its own room. Instead, I just put it next to the potion brewer because there was a little bit of space left. A cocoa bean farm. Um, yeah, if you want to have a lot of brown dye, then this is quite the perfect farm, I guess. It's quite small, it's quite fast. I mean, what more do you want? Oh, I guess it's getting night time. Time to sleep. And uh, my bed is still sitting in the library. I will eventually build a proper bedroom. Maybe even this episode. Honestly, this is something I really want to have. But anyways, if we now go around this corner here, we get to our bamboo farm. A quite simple one. Quite slow one. On purpose, if you remember. Yeah, I had quite some issues with that. But now it works perfectly fine. And it totally fills the need of bamboo that I currently have. Though not sure if that will still be another one at 20, where bamboo wood will be a thing. Right above the barrels here, there is our honeycomb and honey bottle farm. You can just take the honey bottles out of there, you can make honey blocks out of them. And to put the glass bottles back, we can use this little elevator here. Then we get a floor higher up, and there we can access the dispensers. So let's put the glass bottles back, and to get down one floor again, we use gravity. And obviously to negate fall damage, carpet on top of powdered snow. Another small addition that didn't make it in any videos is this little contraption here. It is a golden carriage uh, dispenser that exactly dispenses 32 golden carrots in my inventory. For the refilling of the droppers we make use of a chest boat that is here <laughs> chucked into the block. If we fill that up with golden carrots, well, quote unquote, fill it up. Yeah, 58 is maybe not as much. And we unlock the hoppers below. Then the golden carrots are being distributed evenly between the said hoppers and then forwarded to the droppers. Yeah, hopper locking, honestly, this is something I always do, but I think no one really cares. Do you? Okay, wanna see some more useless redstone stuff? There is actually another room right here. And that is a temporal storage. So I can just put all my stuff in here and uh, yeah, this is a lot of stuff. And then we can see my stuff being chucked in a corner here. Yeah. And then I can do my daily chores, like here is an iron delivery and compressing iron ingots into iron blocks that requires a lot of inventory space in my opinion. At least if you want to make it fast and efficient. Let's speed that up actually, I guess that might take a while. Okay, and when you're done with everything, if you want to retrieve your items, you just have to again step on the pressure plate and there you have it. I also thought about getting rid of my items automatically, 
But the only method I knew of that doesn't require opening the inventory and putting them away manually was... Death. Now here is the thing. This game mode is called survival and it feels like I would make a pretty bad job at surviving if I blow myself up just for fun now and then. I'm currently sitting at three deaths. I think that's a quite reasonable amount. Yeah, I know, hardcore player would laugh at me now, but every death is special for me. There is even a book here that has all my deaths inside, with their date, their cause and some funny text. And now imagine that there would be now 20 additional pages just for blowing myself up to get rid of my inventory space. Huh, not cool I guess. Oh, yeah, and uh, about the iron delivery system. Well, there is now an additional farm that is hooked up to that. So there will not only be iron deliveries, but also sugarcane deliveries. Well, okay, this is just the redstone for the sugarcane farm. The actual sugarcane farm is down here and it actually goes quite deep. Yeah, <laughs> things that I love, camera. Digging holes and building farms. Maybe I should record more of the things that I do. Okay, how does this thing work? Even if it doesn't look like it, this farm is a time-based one. So everything starts with a hopper clock that sends out a hopper minecart every 41 minutes. There are 10 floors with 16 plants on each floor and every time the minecart passes a floor, the pistons for the floor below trigger. Why 41 minutes? If you have a two-stage high sugarcane plant, it needs to receive 16 random ticks to grow to the next stage, not just one. The amount of ticks is stored inside the upper block of that plant, and if you destroy it, all the progress gets lost. So you can lose up to 15 growth ticks by destroying it, and therefore you get more sugarcane out of a 41-minute cycle than a 30-minute cycle. For a more in-depth explanation, please watch Omengo's video about that. He made quite an interesting and in-depth video about that. Our hopper minecart, meanwhile, made it to the end of the farm and is now traveling back to the top, where it loads off its content into the chest minecart. The question remains, what do I do with all the free space that I now got? Maybe I can even excavate more of the blocks here and then have even more space available. Well anyways, while I was digging holes, I also opened up some cave systems and I have the habit of lighting the cave systems that are below my base up. I don't know why, I just do that occasionally when I find one. And normally I wouldn't show anything of that because it's rather boring. But this time I have something to show you. Okay, what, what the heck is this? I hear zombies, hear a skeleton. Oh, okay. Let's block that one off. There is a skeleton, I think. Maybe also let's block that one off. I really want to kill the man. I mean, they probably cannot despawn because they are holding blocks. Okay, there is a zombie behind. Let's just make a little safety bunker here. Two blocks high, if everything goes wrong. Maybe I should just try smack them. Sweeping edge will do the trick. Okay, no that doesn't... Holy is that loud. Oh my... And they're gone, great. Oh, that was dangerous. Okay, I think I got it. Well... No, I don't think I got it. Okay, maybe if... Honest, okay, honestly, I think there are so many endermen just teleporting somewhere around me and... Yeah, I think that was a bad idea. Ah. Huh, this game can be very scary sometimes. Okay, 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 no, no, don't, don't get stuck, no, okay.
Come on. Two hearts. Okay, two hearts. Okay, come on. This should be the last one. Uh, okay, and a skeleton. Manageable. Absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. Not the last one. Not the last one. Back to the sugarcane farm once more, because I just realized that I'm still missing an important part, and that is the redistribution of the chest mine cards. With just the iron farm, it was quite easy. Put them in the barrel here, flick that leather, they get thrown down a hole, and at the end of it, there would already be the iron farm. Now I have an additional farm, and if I don't want to manually divide the chest mine cards and bring them back by foot, some more automation is needed. So let's get rid of the obsolete redstone and then we can start with a new one. Well then, can you spot the difference? Well, okay, quite obvious when I walk around here, there is this lever now and if you flick that, then a chamber opens up. We have a chest mine card down there that can be filled up with even more chest mine cards. And to start it, honestly, I didn't have any more space, so there is this button here and the minecart goes off. I do fear that I'll eventually fall down that hole here, so I will need to keep an emergency exit open for that. Now then, I completed the whole track now, and uh, yeah, I think the easiest way to show a minecart track is actually to ride it uh, myself, so I will do that now. Probably not the best idea. Yeah, already some headaches. Oh, 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 yeah, mm hmm this system is a little bit time-based, so after a couple of seconds we will move on down to the iron farm with a big drop. This is, by the way, the same hole that I used to just throw the minecarts and item farm down. Hopefully I won't die. Yep, easy. And now we can enjoy our little stay down at the iron farm. Yeah, it's quite wild, I guess. And back up it is. Probably the worst roller coaster I have ever built. 10 from 10 would ride again. Yep. Any second now. And we're back. Perfect. Man, sometimes it's actually the small redstone contraptions that bring me joy. If someone would ask me, which room do you want to add next? And it would probably be the bedroom. So I guess the next logical step would be to build an entrance, right here. An entrance to my house. Because what I dislike the most is to have the bedroom somewhere deeply hidden inside the house, so that you would need to already spend half of the night to get to your own bed. And if you then go out again, the creeper smiles at you and says, good morning. Boom. That was a pretty roundabout way of saying I want my bed connected to the entrance that is not there yet. But yeah, um, I digress. Yeah, I do. Well, my initial plan was to have some sort of piston door here, but honestly I don't think that I have the space for that, so maybe an extending staircase that leads down here. I think I'll just try around a bit, so I'll be right back. We will see how it goes. Something like this. So how would the redstone sequence would be? But first I would need to power this block here. Then I need to power that. And then eventually that. And the depowering sequence would be the same then. So first this, then this, and then this. And then we have a flushed wall. No mobs can enter anymore. Okay, and if I did everything correctly, then... Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I just messed up the timing. Nice. 
for the mechanism of opening and closing that door, I'm thinking about a Skulk Shrieker and Skulk Sensor combo. Because Shriekers only activate if the sound that the sensors pick up are player based. So if, if we would have a block falling, no reaction. But if we instead now, for example, walk, then our system activates. Actually, it activates twice, because the turning off of the Shrieker is also something that the observer observes. But with this T flip flop, we make one signal out of that. I think I can get rid of the T flip flop. Because I need two signals anyways, with a nice amount of delay in between. So this is actually perfect. The first signal pushes the redstone block forward, and the second retracts it again. Now just a little running test. Will it be fast enough to open? Yes. Mm hmm. Good, good. And a little bit of decoration later. I still don't know if I should add any more carpet, either brown one or maybe also red. And I also think about adding doors to this closet-like structure. So let's add them. Yeah, much better now. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, what else is here? There are some Jacko lanterns behind the stairs. I probably will change them up to frog lights later on. It's just that I don't have them yet. And as already mentioned, there is my little elevator that will bring me eventually to my bedroom. Just for a quick access. And then I need a way back down also. Probably again gravity. Ouch. Thank you. Yeah. I initially had my elevator one block here in the front more, but then I realized having it like that is now symmetrical with the other bubble elevator that gives me my minecarts, which there aren't any right now, but you know what I mean. Well then, like I said, entrance is finished now. It got a little bit dusty while building it. Maybe I should take a shower before I continue. And for that, I have the exact perfect thing that I need right now. A bathroom. <laughs> Yay. Shower thoughts with Nikoshin. In hindsight, I should have dug a hole at the feet of the inner man and attacked them from there. Maybe with this weeping edge would have worked better like that. I also heard that they can't teleport away when they are attacked at their legs. Not sure if that's true though. Sounds more like a myth than anything else. On the other hand, even if the situation was quite terrifying, it also was a little bit of fun. And I also have something for the video to show. I even was able to throw a Jojo reference in there. <laughs> and if I would have died there, that would have been an additional page in the Book of Death which would have immortalized that event in my world. Should have called that book a death note, now that I think about it. That would have been two anime references in one video. Well, I do have a library, so wouldn't it make sense to actually fill it with books? I just need to write a new one. Nikoshin and the Pit of Immortal Enderman. Or something like that. Then again, my English might not suffice. Poetry is not my thing either. So I might just give ChatGPT a try. Oh boy, so many ideas. The text is floating my brain. Hmm, I'll probably come back to that when I'm done with the main part of the episode. The people who are interested in the result, they can simply stay. So much about the shower, I feel quite refreshed now. And that's how I got myself a bathroom. I wanted to have a shower clip and I didn't want to build it in creative anymore like I did in the last episodes. So a bathroom in my survival series it is. Okay, where was I? Yeah, right, bedroom, bedroom. A little bit worried about that honestly. Don't know how it will be yet. Okay, I think I'm onto something. These are the positions of the bed and the bedside table. Accent color will be blue and the pale yellow walls should highlight them even more. And some bookshelves because bookshelves are great. 
the bubble elevator from the entrance is this one and there is also a staircase from this floor here to the bedroom now. Not sure how I will deal with the walls, honestly. It goes a little bit out of hand right now, but we will see. And a couple of minutes later, my bedroom is finished. A roof of skulk blocks because they just look good in a bedroom and a little bit of deco. Probably I'll need a weather skeleton farm eventually because I use this heads as deco so often. I want beacons. Oh man. And to get back down to the entrance again, like I said, bubble elevator to get up, but to get down, still no proper walls as said, but gravity is implemented. Yeah. Yeah, from the outside, uh probably a good contender for being the next side that gets the facade. But there is something missing here on the right side. I don't know what I should build here. It's quite a lot of space. Well, if, if you have an idea, if you have a contraption, a redstone contraption, a farm, some normal room, I guess is also okay, that you want to see in my house, tell me in the comments, I'll think about that. I have my own ideas already, but we will see what you have. I hope this episode was at least slightly enjoyable. Probably wasn't a good idea to throw everything that I deemed uninteresting in one big video, but not showing it also felt wrong. I also like to normally have one bigger project that the video revolves around, something that did not happen this time as well. You can tell me your thoughts via the like buttons, but also in the comments. I'm quite happy for any kind of critique, be it positive or negative. This is the end of the video. You can already turn off now, or you can stay and see how my ChatGPT story ended. If you're one of the latter ones, then I can just say, it's story time. In a time long past, when the sun had just set and the moon rose high in the night sky, a lone adventurer dwelt deep into the depths of a cave system in the overworld below the towering fortress. Armed with a sturdy sword and fortified with courage, they ventured into the unknown, seeking treasures and glory. As they made their way through the labyrinthy passages, the adventurer stumbled upon a particular hole. Peering into its darkness, they were met with a sight that sent shivers down their spine. The hole was teeming with endermen, creatures of the end who had somehow found their way into the overworld. But these were not ordinary endermen, for they clutched blocks in their spindly arms, preventing them from despawning. Undeterred, the adventurer boldly charged at the endermen, sword swinging. But to their dismay, their attacks proved futile, for the endermen were still resilient and cunning. With lightning quick reflexes, they teleported away, vanishing into the shadows of the nearby caves. The adventurer, now realizing the gravity of their situation, braced themselves for what was to come. Little did they know that the endermen were not just going to flee, but they had a sinister plan in motion. As the adventurer cautiously made their way through the caves, they were suddenly bested by a horde of endermen. The creatures materialized out of thin air, their glowing purple eyes fixed on the adventurer with an overworldly intensity. With each strike of the claws, the adventurer felt a searing pain of their attacks. Desperately, the adventurer swung their sword, trying to fend off the relentless onslaught. But the endermen were relentless, appearing, disappearing with uncanny speed. They attacked in waves, teleporting from cave to cave, cornering the adventurer in an intricate dance of death. The once confident adventurer found themselves overwhelmed. Their sword clashing against the sharp claws of the enderman, their armor battered and bruised. With each passing moment, the situation grew dire. The adventurer's strange waned, their vision blurred with exhaustion. But they refused to yield driven by their unwavering determination to survive. They fought with all their might, their sword a blur of steel as they parried and struck, pushing back against the relentless tide of Enderman. 
the battle ranged on for what seemed like an eternity. The clash of steel against flesh echoing through the caves. The venturous muscles screamed with fatigue, their breaths coming in wrecked gasps. Yet they fought on, fueled by sheer grit and determination. Just as the first light of dawn began to filter into the caves, the adventurer delivered the final, mighty blow, felling the last of the Endermen. Silence descended upon the caves, broken only by the adventurer's labored breathing. They stood victorious, but the toll of the battle was evident. Their armor was in tatters, their body battered and bruised. As the adventurer made their way back to the surface, they couldn't help but reflect on the harrowing ordeal they had just endured. They realized that they had faced an ancient evil, something far beyond their wildest imagination. The Endermen, wielding blocks as weapons, had posed a threat unlike any they had ever encountered. Word of the adventurer's epic battle spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that was whispered around campfires for generations to come. It was said that the Endermen, thwart in their attempt to invade the overworld, had retreated back to the end, vowing for revenge. But the adventurer, forever changed by their encounter, remained vigilant. They knew that the Endermen could return at any moment, and that they would need to be ever vigilant in defending their realm. And that marks the end of the story that I read to you. If you want to read the rest, uh, I will skip through the pages and you can stop wherever you want, then you can read in peace. Honestly, I haven't read it myself even further. Just skipping through the pages, it seems like the AI had repeated itself, but I'll do the reading after finishing this video. So no comment on that. Uh, yeah, but like I said, for me, this is the end of the episode and now for good. So <laughs> bye.